Julia Louis-Dreyfus is an eight-time acting winner at the Emmys and three producing Emmys, so she's had a total of 11 career Emmy Awards. We're going to talk about some of the records she set and uh, tied and so forth in just a little while. But tell me, first of all, Julia, um, you've got a really fun category, as you always do every year. You've got Phoebe, um, yeah. Rachel coming back. You've got uh, Natasha Leon, legend Catherine O'Hara. Um, what would what would Selena Meyer do to take down all these ladies at the Emmy? <laughs> <laughs> what would Selena Meyer do? Boy, that's a really good question. It would be vicious, and she would fail. I would also uh, point out because Selena Meyer has a tendency to uh, shoot herself in her own foot time and time again. Um, but um, anyway, that the, I, I don't know what she would do exactly. I, I need my team of writers to figure that out, but it wouldn't be pretty. And it wouldn't be, uh, uh, it, it, it wouldn't be equitable in any way. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, speaking of a team of writers, the finale was so wickedly funny because we got a really fitting ending for Selena. It was such an unsentimental burn to have um, her death kind of be overtaken by the death of Tom Hanks. It was just wonderful, really, really funny. Did you feel the same way? I did, actually. Yeah, I was quite pleased with how, the, how we ended the storylines, these arcs for, for, in fact, all of the characters on the show, not just for Selena Meyer, I was, although I was quite pleased with where she ended up. Um, but I, I feel as, as if it was a fitting end for each character. And it, we, a lot of thought obviously went into it. Um, actually, we'd been talking about it for years, in fact. Um, and, um, and it was, and I, I, I feel very, I felt from the very beginning of the show through till now, the, this moment, this, the, through the very final end, I felt very protective of the show. And, uh, and I think we did a, I think we did it good. I think we did justice to the, to the end. I really wanted to keep the level of, excellence that Armando set into motion in the very beginning. I wanted to keep that high bar going. And it wasn't it wasn't always easy, but we did it. I think we did it. Thank I've got you. a couple of finale questions too. Since you did think about it for so long, what how difficult is that to make sure that you do stick the landing and end the show like you want to? Also, what were a couple of ideas maybe that came up over those years that that you discarded for some reason or another. Okay, well, what was the first question? How difficult is it to stick that landing? Yeah, you've been a part of several finales now. I'm thinking of, you know, of course, Seinfeld yeah. and- uh, Seinfeld and then- Christine, the, Well, uh, Christine wasn't really a finale. We, we, we didn't have, unfortunately, we were not given the opportunity to do that on Christine. Um, you were no, part of I'm the not David Letterman finale? That. What? It's, you were part of the David Letterman finale where you That's did about true. the yeah. Seinfeld finale. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that was fun. Um, it's difficult to stick the landing. I mean, there's a lot of pressure. Let's let's uh, let's face facts. And furthermore, there's pressure that we put on ourselves. Like I said, we we all felt very strongly that we had to do justice to each individual character and not just the show as a whole. So there was that. And then originally back in the a couple years ago when Dave and I were talking about this, we did discuss the possibility of Richard becoming the candidate. Uh, and Richard Splett, played by the wonderful Sam Richardson, and then him calling S Selena Meyer to see if she would be his Veep. And we would cut out, we would end the show before she actually answered the question. You would see sort of the breath before she answered the question. 
But then as time, so that was sort of a, and I still actually think that's kind of a fun idea, but now, but given how the show, the trajectory of the show and uh, where we've taken it up until the finale, that didn't feel quite right. That felt a, maybe a little bit anticlimactic, climactic. But um, so I, I I think the idea and given the we had a year in which we took a break uh, because of my illness and that gave us further time to sort of ponder what we would do with these characters and with Selena specifically and the idea of her getting her what she thought she wanted and what that would mean for her as a human being, that started to feel more interesting and kind of delicious and certainly delicious from a from a an acting point of view. So was it harder or easier to to write for the show and to perform the show in the Trump era? Like did that make it harder because what was going on in real life was kind of like watching an episode of Veep? Um, it, it's made it a lot harder, actually to uh to do the show i mean the 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 good news in in this trump universe that we're living in right now i mean the good news is that we set up conceptually the show was we never defined party and we never um we never really referenced any contemporary uh american or uh political history beyond i'm pretty sure reagan nancy reagan was the most contemporary person in american politics that we mentioned so we didn't go beyond that and that i think that gave us there was a buffer as a result and of course the show itself was never a parody i mean we leave, leave that to uh snl who, who do it so brilliantly but uh it was more of a you know an a uh, it is a satire on the culture of politics. So that also was very helpful. But I won't lie. I mean, what this guy is doing in the White House, uh, this orange human being, um, is, uh, you know, if we, a lot of what he's done, if we had written that into a, actually, written it for Selena Meyer to do or one of our characters to do just a few years back, everyone would have thought we'd lost our minds because it was too, it would be too broad. It would be, uh, you know, outside the, too outside the norm of behavior, you know, so this, and this whole idea of, and which the show was based on, which is, you know, sort of in front of the camera or in front of the curtain and behind the curtain, that sort of also got blown out because now all of a sudden all of this behavior, this, and I will call it very bad behavior, is in your face. So it's definitely, we're living in a different world. So it, it definitely made the job harder to do. Um, and, uh, but we, we managed to do it anyway. I want to ask you, we mentioned your records a few minutes ago. You are one of the biggest Emmy champions now of all time. I saw you talking to Jimmy Kimmel about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, let's start with the main one. If you win uh, for acting uh, in, in a few weeks, uh, you, you surpass Cloris Leachman. You're tied with her now on primetime acting. You would be at nine. Um, first of all, and Rob, bear with me because I'm going to have several records to ask about. Um, but yeah. first of all, I think we ought to get with Don Misher, and the two of you should present a category together. Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, yes, Florence Leachman. Um, but what what would that mean to you to to, to surpass her? She's she's a, another icon of television. Well, she's certain certainly a hero of mine. I mean, I I think she's everything she's ever done has been extraordinary. Um, and uh, in fact, wasn't she in Last Picture Show? She won an Oscar she for that. Yeah. Wow. yeah, that's right. So I mean, this woman has has had one sort of triumph after another so just to even be mentioned in the same sentence with her is sort of you know a heady experience uh what would it mean i don't know i i don't i don't know i mean 
it, it's all it's all good. I mean, it really is. And I, I know that sounds like I'm bullshitting, but it, it really is. It's all good. It's so nice to be invited to the party. If, if I were so lucky to win, that would be extraordinary. And if I lose, it would also be extraordinary because, you know, I, 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 I've been going to this. I, I just can't believe that we've been so lucky to be invited to this thing year after year on Veep. I mean, I just can't get over it. It, it, the, it has been such a, a ton of good fortune. So I don't know. It's, it's kind of like a win-win in in a lot of ways it really is i'm i'm I, i'm not kidding the other two i wanted to ask you about um in your category lead actress on comedy you're already two ahead of um mary tyler moore and candace bergen they've got five lead actress comedy and you've got seven uh because you have the six from veep and the one from christine um so you've got oh, yeah. record and then we uh the last time you won you surpassed the character of Selena Meyer is now the all-time character. Uh, you've got six there. Uh, there's Wait a minute. Say that last thing again. I don't understand what you mean. Oh, you mean for the... Oh, I the see. The character. Selena Meyer won, has won uh, six times. Uh, yeah. And uh, right. Barney Fife, Don Knotts, won five. Uh, Ed Asner, <laughs> Lou Grant, yeah. won five. <laughs> And uh, Candace Bergen again won five. So you, you're the all time winningest character as well. That's just cool. You, look at you with all your trivia facts. I can't get over it. Um, I, I, that's just, it's all good, man. I can't, you know, who would have thunk that this in my life? I, I mean, I, you know, you, you wouldn't dare even dream it. I don't know how else to, to say it. You wouldn't dare dream it, you know? Anyway, I'm just so happy to have a job. <laughs> that's true and like with everything that you've that, that's come out of this show and all the awards and all the uh, accolades what is actually the hardest part about saying goodbye to Veep? oh well that's an easy answer the hardest part of saying goodbye to veep has been saying goodbye to all of these people whom i adore uh at working with them it has been the ride of a lifetime and um it was a crushing last week doing that finale we, we we as a group we barely got through it it was just tears and tears for days and in fact i just posted today a picture that somebody got uh from hbo got of of me and tony and it was just taken moments after we finished shooting the last scene of the final episode of the final season. And I, I'm still in my wardrobe and he was there because we all showed up. Everybody, whenever anybody had their last scene, everyone gathered. I mean, not only cast, but crew and producers and writers. And I mean, it was a huge turnout for each single person and anyway there's a picture of me and tony that really says it all we were very uh proud of how we finished the show but also crushed by how we finished the show um and um i mean crushed in the sense that we had to walk away from this you know we we, we made the decision to walk away from this precious thing i think it was the right decision for sure but it was a hard thing to say goodbye to. I want to ask you about uh, your Mark Twain Prize from a few months ago. Talk about sure. some legends, the people you joined that have won that award in Washington, yeah. D.C. Tell us, I, I don't even know how, how does somebody get informed that they're, you know, potentially going to receive something like that? And okay, then, well, like? I'll tell you, Chris, I'm t I got an email that was forwarded to me uh, from um, my agent. And I misread it. And um, I thought they were asking me to come to DC and present an award to somebody at the Kennedy Center. And, uh, and, we, and it was in the middle, we were in the, at the time we we're in the middle of shooting Veep. And I was like, oh my God, I'm not gonna schlep all the way to DC 
to, you know, in the middle of work and uh, blah, 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 and present, and I have to write a speech to present it. And then I sort of read it again, and I saw, oh, no, they're, oh, they want to give me the award. Oh, my God, of course I'll go. <laughs> and so that became, in fact, <laughs> I mean, I'm really telling a story of myself, but it's the, the God's honest truth. And so that's actually how I opened my speech at the Kennedy Center, is that I told that story on myself, um, misreading the letter. But I was that was a, that was a really scary night uh, because you know, there are thousands of people there and you have to, you know, I mean, it's great to get the award, which I'm looking at right now. It's gorgeous. But then once they give it to you, you have to stand up there and prove yourself and, uh, you know, prove that you are worthy of receiving this. So there's like, talk about pressure. You know, I felt a lot of pressure, but anyway, it all worked out good. And it was fun to do because I, my childhood was spent in New York and Washington, D.C., and so my mom and my stepdad live in D.C. still, so they were, they were very thrilled to be at this particular event. Yeah. Um, I was also going to ask you about this. It's my favorite Emmy moment probably in the last 20 years. On your fifth Emmy nomination, it was almost like a joke that Julia Louis Dreyfus is going to lose again, and you did this whole thing into the camera, and then you won, and you were so genuinely surprised, and I think you cried, and you were up against like Renee Taylor and Jane Meadows and Christine Baranski and Janine Garofalo and Harry Gilpin yelled out your name, and you bolted up to the stage. Can you take us back to that moment? Because I've always wanted to ask you about that moment. Yes, you. I I was certain I was going to lose because I had, and uh, and I was pretty relaxed as a result. I mean, I just figured, uh, you know, whatever. And so when the camera cut to me, you know, when they do and they say, and the nominees are, and they cut to me, and I just looked into the camera and I went like, like this or something. Or, I think that's right, isn't it? Did, did I do this or I yeah. went, oh, please, oh, please. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and so, because knowing that you know that was so, I don't know. I was I was I was pretty uh, convinced, and so I was utterly shocked when I was called up there um, and unprepared. I might point out, uh, but um, I did not see that one coming. It's a, it's a good idea from purely from a. a, a mental state point of view is just to assume you're going to lose because chances are you are and then if you don't you're pleasantly surprised and if you do lose then you're yeah you you you, you figured you would <laughs> so that's that's how i sort of always gone into these things you know um uh and that and with some food in my purse to munch on during the four hour show or whatever it is i'm going to ask one more question then let rob wrap up one of my favorite things of you it has nothing to do with Veep in the past two years, because I'm a big sports fan, was watching you and Brad at Northwestern Games uh, when they finally made the tournament for the first time ever, and your oh. son's on the team and, and contributing. And what is that like as a parent when, when your children are making their dreams come true? Um, it's the best thing in the whole world. That's what it's like. I, I, um, I have to say that going to that tournament was just about the be all end all. And uh, I, I was so, although I will tell you, I was terrified. I mean, I was so much, I was so nervous the entire time um, for both games, by the way, because they, they made it into the second round, but um, it was a, a, a positive an absolute dream. I can't believe, Chris. So you are you a Big Ten TV watcher? Do you do you watch uh, Big Ten sports? Well, if you can tell by my accent, I'm more SEC. But when it comes to the uh, <laughs> the uh, NCAA tournament, I watch practically every game. Oh, I see. Got it. Got it. Got it. Well, I, because of Northwestern, I got Big Ten TV on my on my phone. I got it on my uh, iPad and um, 
and my uh, assistant Rachel was very good at giving me that like even we're shooting at veep and she's running in constantly giving me the score i i'm a an avid uh nu sports fan and an avid basketball fan in fact i really am and that's because of uh of uh, our kids and and charlie certainly yeah but so i have I'll to say it was, it was definitely the 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 uh, one of the highlights of my life was going to that tournament anyway that's all sorry so a final question about Veep, because when people ask me, like, what, what do you love about Veep? There's lots to say, but for me, it's the one-liners and the, the insults. Oh, I just live for those. And, like, I think back to first season when they were calling all these nicknames that people had for something like Mammary Meyer and Veep Throat Boulder Meyer. Love, love that stuff. Do you yeah. have a favourite insult that when people ask you that question, what do you recall as your favourite insult? Well, that's like... Um choosing what is your favorite child can we just say it's it's <laughs> but um a few that come to mind <clears throat> i'm i'm it's always a big fan of jolly green jizz face just sort of quick <laughs> to the point <laughs> very much it still does it's it's still sort of packed a punch and then, um and then i i really very much and i think this was season two i think I loved it when I mean, and I should try to be trying to remember stuff from this past season, but this is sort of seared into my brain, which is that's like trying to the, the, the line is that's like trying to use a croissant as a fucking dildo. Yes. It doesn't do the job and it makes a fucking mess. And I think that's oh. kind of um, I don't know. The word gorgeous comes to mind. It is. It's so evocative. Like, it's just gold. Um, Julia, thank you so much for your time today. Good luck at the Emmys, and we'll, uh, we'll see you on the Red Cup in a few weeks. Yeah, okay, and, and welcome to the States when you get here. And everybody, go to goldderby.com, make your predictions so you can watch um, contender chats just like this one with Julia.